class, now one of the earliest tests of the U.S. Constitution was the Whiskey Rebellion from 1791 to 94. What is the Whiskey Rebellion? Well, first off, it's not when you drink too much Jack Daniels and your stomach rebels against you. We better start at the Articles of Confederation. Under the Articles, some of the states, like Massachusetts, had accrued massive debt, which those individual states were responsible for. When the country decided to ditch the Articles in favor of the Constitution, these debts gave the new national government a credit score worse than a college freshman with a Visa, Amex, and H&M card. Alexander Hamilton knew the best way to deal with these debts was through assumption, which meant all states' debts would be consolidated into one national debt. Yes, thrifty states like Virginia complained about having to pay other states' debts, but it's funny how people get on board when you promise to place the capital in their backyard. So it's 1791 and time to pay the national debt of 75 million, which was about 2 billion back then. First, Hamilton turned to everyone's favorite topic, tariffs. Ugh, I know students hate hearing about tariffs, but they really are important. They allow the government to make money on imported goods while at the same time protecting domestic goods. The second method was a tax on whiskey. Why whiskey? Well, whiskey was kind of money back then. Many Appalachian farmers distilled their excess grain into whiskey and sold it to supplement their income. Paper money was in short supply and many were skeptical of a national currency, but whiskey was readily accepted as payment. And, well, it's alcohol. America has had a sizable BAC level since the beginning and whiskey made money. As you can imagine, many small distillers had a problem with this tax. First, they didn't like the idea of a tax on their product to pay off someone else's debt. And secondly, you either paid a flat fee or buy the gallon. The large distilleries could afford the flat fee but the smaller guys were stuck with the per gallon tax. Small operations saw this as the constitution sticking it to the little guy. Now, some of those small operators in western Pennsylvania decided they weren't going to pay no stinking whiskey tax. Using techniques that echoed the revolution, they erected liberty poles, cried about taxation, and even tarred and feathered tax collectors. Things got progressively worse in western Pennsylvania between officials and opponents to the tax. When rebel leader and revolutionary war hero James McFarlane was killed, it was on. About 7,000 protesters marched towards Pittsburgh to burn it to the ground, shouting independence and even had their own flag. But you have to remember who was president at the time. That's right, George Washington. And he was ready to show these rebels that they weren't dealing with no weak Articles of Confederation central government. This was the U.S. Constitution central government. All in all, nearly 13,000 men of the federal militia, many drafted, were led by President Washington himself to western Pennsylvania. And as you may expect, the insurrection quickly collapsed. A handful of men were hung for the Whiskey Rebellion, but more importantly, Washington and the federal government showed that under the Constitution, they had the power to enforce the law. So that's the Whiskey Rebellion. Leave a comment on what topic you'd like to see illustrated. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.